Thank you, Thank Becca. You. And it's great to see the fuel prices just keep on plummeting down. Oh yeah, plummeting down to dollar forty-seven. <laughs> who would who would have thought? At least we'd it's ever... cheaper than a dollar fifty-nine or dollar. Hang on, hang on. Yes, yes, it yes. is. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I never what, thought I'd see today. the day when a dollar forty-seven would be exciting, but it certainly is. Now we heard about the weather. All this week's going to be miserable and yucky. Don't take your boat out. Don't go surfing. It's probably going to get good towards the weekend. So you can either sit inside and rug up or. Go to Bali! Now, Western Australians in particular love going to Indonesia. It's closer than Sydney. It's uh, cheaper than Broome. Um, in fact, it, you can fly to Bali and have your accommodation and your breakfast and your meals and your transfers for less than just a plane ticket to Broome, which kind of doesn't really? make sense. But Western Australians in, Australians in general have been loving our little island paradise to the north for many, many years. And to tell us exactly why, Annie Payne joins us in a slightly different role to normal as Director of Indojet. Good morning, Annie Payne. <laughs> I'm not a Director of Indojet, oh. but I do work for Indojet. Oh. Well, there you go. Call yourself a director. It's all well and good. We, we like, I, I call myself a talent. <laughs> if I can get away with that, oh, you can exactly. get away with it. Oh, now, well. Annie, I thought because you were coming in today to talk about Indojet, we might not get to see any beautiful memories and photos because you're always in telling us how to present our memories. Right. But look at what we have here. I don't know if we can get a shot of that little picture there. But tell us what's, what's going on in that, in that shot. Is that a recent uh, solution? Um, yes. Uh, a fortnight ago, I went up to Bali and I took a friend of mine and um, we went on a Bali high cruise and we were photographed with the beautiful Legong dancers there, the girls in the exquisite costumes with the little gold pieces yeah, that beautiful. vibrate and the, they have the most beautiful hand movements um, when they dance, very elegant. So controlled, aren't they? Oh, absolutely but stunning. And they learn these movements as very tiny little girls and gradually progress up into it. So many of the women you see in the street just have the most beautiful grace and poise because mm. they've been doing these exotic dances all their life. Yeah, it used to be as well, Annie. I'm not sure if, if uh, obviously culture's changed a little, but it used to be that sort of keep them out of the sunlight. They wanted to get their skin oh, as white as they possibly yes, could. Yes, and so someone yes. like Anita, of course, would look like an absolute goddess. Oh, yes. Um, being yes, all light hair yes, and light skin. Yes, Is that still, yes. still the case? That, yes, they do revere the, the, the lighter, paler skin. Um, that's just a... I mean, I would love to have the, the wonderful honey-coloured skin. Exactly. Absolutely. We, we always, we always, we always want, want the opposite, yeah, don't we? And <laughs> so Anita wants straight hair. And yeah, <laughs> straight yeah, hair. yeah, exactly. I can empathise with you. So why do so many West Australians love travelling to Bali? What because it? it's, it's the nearest foreign destination to Australia. Um, tourism to um, New Guinea is not as well established as tourism to Bali. Bali's been a hot spot for travel... Um, for the last 30 years, well-established mm -hmm. travel spot. It's easy, it's three and a half hours to get there. So you can hop on the, the plane, be in a completely different culture in three and a half hours. It's easy, wow. it's in our backyard virtually. Mm -hmm. And the people of Perth consider Bali as their special holiday spot. And a beautiful weather as well, what's the oh, climate like? The weather is <sighs> perfect. Um, is it all year round perfect, or is no? There certain times uh, well, um, it, it's always hot because, of course, Bali's only eight degrees from the equator, mm -hmm. so it's always hot and it's wet or dry. Oh. At the moment, it's dry, so it's peak season time. Glorious warm days of twenty-eight or thirty. Oh. Beautiful balmy evenings with pleasant breeze. In the the uh, in January, for example. You get showers of rain in, late in the afternoon, early evening, but it cools everything down, yeah. freshens everything up, ready for the next day. doesn't interfere with your fun. No. Now, one thing a lot of people ask me, now obviously Bali's part of Indonesia, and Indonesia is predominantly a Muslim country, so a lot of people mm. sort of say, oh, what, what Muslim traditions and things do you have to observe while mm. you're in Bali? Now, just give us, because uh, obviously Bali's a little bit different than Bali, the rest of Indonesia. Bali's very it? different. It's, it's the one island in that enormous archipelago of islands that make up Indonesia that's actually Hindu. Uh, yeah. And it's been a Hindu uh, island, uh, a religious island, for many, many centuries. And they've actually merged traditional Indian Hindu beliefs with their local, um, more regional gods so that they've their um, uh, Hindu gods aren't quite the same as the ones in, in India. 
but you'll find that they're a deeply religious people. They have mm. a lot of ceremonies. Um, every home will have a little home temple of some sort. Oh, really? And every day at certain times of the day, offerings will be made to the gods. And you'll see um, girls walking down the street with a rattan basket, with little baskets of offerings, and they'll put them outside the business, inside the business. Um, they're scattered along the pavement uh, with a little stick of incense sometimes. Uh, it's just part of their life, and it's it's a really nice part of their it's life. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. See, I think, because even though they're total opposites in this particular conversation, because yes, I've been yes, to Bali a few times, yes. and I love it to death. And I mean, you could be I'm in a taxi, same. and your taxi driver will have a little offering on his dashboard, oh, really? and he might have a stick of incense, you know, slowly just burning down. He might have a little piece of fruit or a little biscuit for the gods, whatever the god he's he's honouring at that moment. Mm. Um, it's it's fantastic how the way they've embraced Western oh, yes, culture, yes. but at the, at the same time maintain Retain their own. Their own. Yeah. There's a bit of a history in Bali, because Bali, uh, was, was well, Bali was colonised by the Dutch way back by then. By the Dutch, yes, way, way back in about uh, the late 1500s. Uh, and, uh, but they've maintained their own Balinese culture, and it is quite different from the other parts of, of Indonesia. And, and I think that's what makes it so charming. They're a naturally mm. warm and friendly race of people. Uh, and uh, although there are a lot of Indonesians from other parts of, of Indonesia working in Bali, it's such a popular mm. place, um, th the culture is intact and is still, even in this hurly-burly, very commercial life that, that is tourism Bali, that side is still there and I think it's such a gentle thing that people people love that difference. Yes. Mm. So can travellers like if I was to go to Bali could I go and visit a temple or do I need oh, to do yes. or dress a certain way? Yes, um, the Balinese are quite modest in their own dress. Um, if you go to a temple you would need to cover your arms and cover your knees so you mm. might wear pants instead of mm. shorts or you might just pop a, a shirt over whatever it is you're wearing and a lot of for women a lot of women are asked to wear a sash and the temples a will sash. have the sash oh, okay. so you tie the sash around your waist when you went in you take your shoes off Right. And you find you take your shoes off quite a lot in Bali. Mm. <laughs> and an interesting thing I know, uh, 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 from, from a male perspective, I, I used to go to Bali, you know, for a month I'd take mm. a backpack, one pair of yes. shorts and a singlet. Yes. But if you want to go to a government office, you have to wear a collared shirt. That's right. That's yes. Stand? Yes. I yes. haven't been for a yes. while. No, it's still the same. Yeah, so yeah. a few little there, there are, Yes, certain, uh, they're, they're a very modest uh, race of people. Although you'll see women sunbaking topless on the beach, the Balinese themselves are always beautifully dressed, uh, the As ladies we will wear a long fire. jacket, mm -hmm. uh, a long skirt, very modest people. So it's a good idea not to offend those modesties too mm. much if you can. Now while we're on the dance, we might as well stick with that. So yes. uh, obviously we've seen the ladies there, the training that goes into it, the bent back fingers and all the oh, rest of it. Yes. Where's a good place to go and watch a really good performance of the, of the Magong? There are um, places up in the, um, on the way up to Ubud, uh, that really specialise in it and they are schools that teach um, legong dancing. Uh, they're very good. A lot of the hotels will put on a floor show for you and you'll often hear the gamelan music, that very tinkly, relaxing sort of music. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the big hotels actually have a couple of gamelan players in their foyer or perhaps beside the pool. So you'll go down, dive in the pool, have your, have your dip, come back um, lie on the sun lounge and you can hear this wonderful soothing tinkling music it's supposed to represent the sound of a thousand bells oh, um, very yes so it, it's not difficult to get in touch with with that musical uh, dancing sort of culture it's there and it's often right there oh, in your beautiful. hotel Oh, good. Just quickly before we get wrapped up. Mm. Um, you like to shop. Do you, I do like to shop. Now, do you, I've heard this thing that you need a bargain or a haggle, is that, yes. is that the term? Yes. Do you need to do that when you go um, to Bali? Not in the actual large shops. If you go into a shopping centre, um, you won't. Okay. But if you want to go into the markets or so, down some of the little alleys with, with the stalls, you're expected to haggle. Now, do remember that you're dealing in rupiah, not dollars. So though it sounds a massive amount, um, it's, it's rupiah. Mm. Um, and you need to um, halve 
what they say. If they say it's uh, 90,000 repair, oh. you, you start with half and then you, you be prepared to meet them halfway. Oh. One very important tip though. Do not start to make a deal with someone unless you're planning on buying something. Exactly. Ah. Big, because they're very disrespectful. I see a lot of Western Australia, well, a lot of so. Aussies doing it. And it's yes. kind of embarrassing. And they'll mm. sit there and haggle, haggle, and they go, ah, I didn't really want to buy it anyway, mate. No. They think it's funny and walk off. This so is really a part of these people's rude. life. very rude. Do not start rude. to bargain yeah. unless you mm. plan on doing a deal don't, at the end. Don't touch something. If a, if, if a trader comes up to you and offers you something, don't touch it unless you intend to buy it. Don't look at the workmanship because he will consider that you're interested in a sale.